Hey everybody, Dave here on Syndicated Pipe Club once again. How is everybody doing tonight? Now as always, I have Greg with me. How are you doing tonight, Greg? Oh. <laughs> a little uh, a little audio notes after our little uh, fun uh, before recording, setting mm. up my new mic. Yes, and, and don't worry folks, we're not using that mic right now. Yes. We, we need a, we need another piece on Greg's end, and we just gotta wait. So by next week, we should probably have that all ready to go. Yes, which uh, I look forward to having. And uh, if you're watching this right now, thank you, Marcus, for that. Uh, it's all thanks to you that I was able to upgrade. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yes, Marcus. Thank, thank you, you so very much. I've been only asking him to upgrade for I don't know how long. Thank you. Since the flash days. Which, uh, speaking of which, I heard uh, Cisco's left. Yep. Last week's episode, um, for those of you watching next week, um, was the... Mm, since we're a week behind, it was last week to us, like, this is the 16th, so that would be, like, whatever Thursday Thursday was, you know, six days ago, the 10th, was his, for me, because that's how I get it on Netflix, but the, that week was his last episode as a, as a series regular. Yeah. Um, you know what, why don't we, uh... I'll ask you some questions about the Flash uh, and kind of do like a little bit of a catch up since I, I'm kind of going into this blind. And that's kind of what we used to do beforehand. And sure. I figured that might be something fun to talk about. But uh, before we do, uh, what pipe and tobacco are you smoking tonight? I am smoking some Super Value uh, English. I can't quite remember if it's just called English or what so uh, it is their english vent one for super value that's put out by uh c and d and i'm smoking it tonight in this nice little joby pipe which uh next week's gonna go to the cleaner and by that i mean it's going to my other office where i now have an orbital sander that's got polishing pads for it for you know for you know taking it out to do your car but it works really well on pipes um this one here i just picked up is uh, one I did on Monday because I've been doing it during my middle son's uh, speech therapy. So I just get them on the computer and then I go clean up a couple of pipes and this is the result. Looking good. So I think a couple more goes with the buffing wheel and that thing will be like as shiny as a new one. It's going to take a little bit of time on some of them. I got a couple carries up there that they're starting to get a little bit of shine to them, but I think they hadn't been polished in like years since before I got them. Uh, you'll have to send me uh, some info on them so I can kind of find something that, uh, similar over here. Well, after we're done, I'll, I'll, uh, cause I, I just bought a, a cheap, well, it wasn't cheap, but it was on sale, like a super deal, like 80% off. I got this orbital sander for 20 bucks. And, uh, <clears throat> it, uh, came with the pads and they're going, oh, great, perfect. Now I've got this. I don't do much, I don't do much sanding, but it's nice to have the sander impossible. But in the meantime, in between times when I need it as a sander, it's going to be a great pipe buffer. Very nice. What are you smoking there, Greg? It looks like you've got yourself a Morgan Bones going on. If I'm reading, if I'm if I'm seeing correct, that you do, Morgan Bones. Uh, it's uh, the only bones I own. Uh, eventually, I'll pick up a another one because it's uh, just a nice, trusty pipe. It's not one that I like immediately reach to, but like. If I'm going somewhere to hang out and I want to bring a pipe with me, this is usually one of the ones that I'll bring because it's uh, nice and dependable. Yes, they are. I've got myself one too. 
It's almost the same shape as yours. I think yours is just a little bit smaller. Yeah, definitely a little bit shorter. Uh, you know, it's a good one. I, I like yours, though. It's a nice one. And there's some fun shapes. Like, uh, I, I have to commend uh, uh, Chris Morgan on his uh, selections. Uh, it's uh, pretty cool. And uh, speaking of which, since, uh, you know, we're uh, talking about stuff like new mics and everything, just uh, wanted to point out uh, my new uh, background uh, uh, image over there. That's uh, uh, a painting I won on Instagram about uh, almost two weeks ago. Uh, and I believe you can find his, uh, his name. It's, uh, the painter's name is Kyle. And he uh, has his stuff under the Instagram handle my lake house art I believe and uh, you can check out his stuff there. there's a lot of cool uh, a lot of uh, bears in the forest with pipes uh, some fishing some uh, with a cup of coffee or something but almost always with a pipe uh, and uh, since he's he's actually from Illinois and he's a big fan of the Great Lakes region so that's kind of what inspires his art uh, for like the his backgrounds and stuff so yeah uh give his stuff a look and it, it's i really uh, i didn't just follow his uh account to win the contest i had been following his stuff beforehand and uh i i personally like it nice okay so you had some flash questions you wanted to ask yeah, yeah. I, I figure since tonight, I think it's kind of going to be a little bit freeform. Uh, yeah, uh, I guess uh, you know, as you know, I haven't uh, been able to. Well, I haven't really watched the season uh, just because uh, we, you know we've had episodes talking about that all and everything. You know, I'm still at least kind of interested in uh, knowing how things are going. Um, does Iris officially have superpowers now? No. She does not. That did not go that way. She is still just Iris. Was it just in the mirror or? Uh... Yeah, she, it, they worked it out as some sort of connection between uh, between her and Mirror Mistress. Um, but uh, the way the way they ended this, the end, the end of the arc, um she went back into the mirror universe because she realized that's where she truly belonged and took her mirror clones with her. And when she did that, she fixed whatever was going on in Iris's head, her connection to the mirror universe, because at the end, like she was able to draw off of mirror master's powers and, uh, save the day using those powers herself. But when, when Eva McCullough went back to the Mirror reverse, she uh, took the powers with her, so that connection was broken. So she got to stay regular depowered Iris for a time. No, no, did she do that? Like, was it just that she went inside, then the powers just disappeared, or did she purposely do that? That part's left up to interpretation. Um, basically, the way Iris explained it in the episode is like she went, it, it, it felt to her like the powers were taken away, but. It could have just been the fact that, you know, McCullough went back into the Mirror Universe, took all the Mirror Universe people with her, and uh, that cut off the, super, the, the powers to Iris. That's just my guess. Yeah, so it wasn't like a bit of mercy kind of thing? Mm-mm. No. Okay, now that... um. I feel a bit better about that. Um, I prefer that Iris kind of stay as Iris and not get superpowers. Not because, you know, I want to be mean to that actress and be like, no, you can't have fun. Because, you know, I do enjoy the stuff like the episode where right. she had very super speed and stuff. I just think that uh, Iris's strengths lay in her scrappiness and uh, you know reporterness uh, like her reporter abilities like the thing to as much as i didn't like the cicada arc i really did enjoy the episode where she went to cicada's house and was talking to him and was trying to 
uh, not arouse suspicion uh, and avoid detection that she was like looking for something. I, I, I forget what it was, but uh, uh, there was good tension in that. But it, it, you know, she was using her mind, her uh, uh, just her own abilities, right. and you know, showing how capable she is just on her own. I think giving her powers kind of would would cheapen that. Yeah, I bet. It would. It would. But yeah, a lot, lots went on since uh, since uh, that episode of the uh, since the, the the flash ended pre COVID and was on hiatus with everything else for you know about a year or so. Yeah, I will say um, only way I would be okay with her kind of gaining powers would be if. Um, Grant Gustin left the show, but it was still going to go on, and she was staying on. I could see a kind of a thing where he gives her his powers, like if he's dying or something. Mm, sort of uh, like if Barry became the speed, speed Force and said, okay, we need a Flash representative, and since there currently are no kids involved, may Iris the Flash. Yeah, that would be the one thing I would say that uh, I would I would be okay with uh, a scenario where I would be fine with her gaining his powers or gaining like a superpower. That sounds reasonable. And I, you know, and I wouldn't be opposed to that. Like if I, if that ever happened, I think I think you could keep. Flash going without Grant Gustin, whereas I don't think you could keep Arrow going without Oliver Queen. Mm, no, definitely not. But I honestly don't think we'll have that many seasons of The Flash left. I think we got this one. I know they're slated for a season eight. After they run out to the secondary story arc, there they have going on for because yeah. uh, basically what they basically what they've done so far this season is they ended the as many uh, many of the loose ends as they could for for the episodes that were supposed to be the last two or three of season six. Yeah, which man that had to be so. They talk about you know. Again, I don't care about the stuff that they're, you know, they decide to do with Ralph Dibney, but, uh, you know, still, like, having to wrap, you know, figure out how to tie up that storyline of your previous season and do something with your next season. Like, I, I commend the uh, writers for that. Yeah, no, they they did that. Uh, I think we were talking when we were talking about the whole Ralph Div Dibney issue and uh, the whole thing that was going on in regards to uh, the actors canceling. Mm -hmm. um, I think they handled it the best way they possibly could. And it's, it's a little sad because we couldn't get to see a little bit more of Sue. But uh, there was an episode, as I think we, we, we surmised would happen, um, because the powers of, of Dibney... He was able. They were able to bring him back, and um, show Ralph had gotten injured during a, a, a mission with Sue, and you know he was all melted. So they did a CGI with uh, an unrecognizable uh, um, character. It's supposed to be uh, be Ralph, elongated man. And then they took him off screen again, and the next time we saw Dibney, he was in a pressure suit. Fully covered face. But whoever was in that suit, I have to give him credit. He must have went back and watched the seasons before the, the issue came up, because he had the mannerisms down. I would have almost thought, if I had known better, that it was the same actor under that suit. Yeah. And of course they did they they, they did the Darth Vader voice changer thing, you know, so that the voice was uh, computerized coming out the suit. 
about the only way you could handle it. Yeah. And also leaving it open, that you know, you know that, uh, like we, we were talking about before, you could you could theoretically bring the character back for a cameo, an episode here and an episode there, with a different actor now. With the explanation is, yeah, I couldn't, you know, with that accident in the pressure suit, I couldn't go back to my normal, my normal look. I had to just to pick a new one. Yeah. I wouldn't like it, but, uh, I mean, uh, based on, you know, the, my, you know, my feelings about it all, but from a story perspective, that would check out with me fine. Yeah, yeah. Um, who is, uh, do, do they kind of have an idea who the big bad is for this season? Well, they've already done uh, a half season, uh, half season arc. For those of you listening on the podcast, I just did air quotes with my fingers. Um, so basically, the storyline that continued on from there is uh, <clears throat> where they would have picked up season seven officially. Um, they rebirthed the Speed Force, and they re- uh, and during that process, they did the Sage Force, Strength Force. Still force. Strength, sage, still, and speed. There were four. So they brought in three more forces, which the forces also had avatars like Barry. The difference, the difference here is, um, the speed force and took the form of Nora, Barry's mom, not his daughter, to be clear. And um. Of course, Barry did the thing. He always does works with the Speed Force. But in the case of the other forces, there weren't uh, other, you know, avatars for those particular forces. The forces mm-hmm. actually took o- were embodied in the people they took over, I guess. So you had basically the Strength Force, which force, which was uh, a cheap version of the Hulk. Um, Sage Forest, which basically nightmare, basically nightmare, and you know a, a time traveler, basically with a still force because his his thing was slowing things down and he can move back and forth through time. Short version of it is they all had various fight scenes and the Speed Force was after them. So the Speed Force for the first half of the season was actually the big bad. The way they did it, it, it was an, it was a neat take. They flopped the ending, but it, it is what it is. And now they're working on; they're just starting to establish the uh, back end of the season for this year. So we're looking at, as you say, Cisco's Cisco and Camille uh, Camilla are gone. Uh, she's going to uh, do some sort of photography thing, like a gallery showing or something like that, is what they're saying. Cisco's going to Argus, so plenty of um, opportunities for coming back as uh, an episode here and there with, with, with the Cisco, so I'm sure we'll see him again. Yeah, I know he's supposed to come back uh, for the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. Um, Wells, there is no new Wells. Um, basically, they ended him with Timeless Wells. It, it, it's hard to explain, but basically there's a Wells, the original Wells, the one that Eobard murdered, basically was reconstituted by the forces, and he has the ability to travel through time within his lifespan. Hmm. So, there's opportunity there for cameos, for Tom Cavanaugh. Yeah, because I know he's leaving the show as well. He's basically he, uh, that's his arc is is finished. So I, unless he's coming back for probably for episode one hundred and fifty or one hundred or whatever the special one is coming up, which they're starting to build. Yep, they're they're starting to build up to. Wouldn't be surprised to see Tom Cavanaugh in in whatever that is. Um, what else? 
So basically the idea is that they finished with, with the Speed Force arc. They are currently working into the next arc, which is going to focus on Cecile a bit because she's been out doing things and showing up in places she's not quite supposed to be in the normal circumstances. And at the end of the last episode, um, last week's episode, it uh, she looked in a mirror and uh, the, the image she saw back was familiar to me, but I, I'm not sure where. I, I don't have an image I can flash up. But she basically was, the reflection was behind a mask with just a golden mask with just the, the eye slits here. So it's like she's connected to somebody else. Was it um, the Psycho Pirate from? Um, it the, may have uh, been Psycho Pirate's mask from uh, the one crossover that you're thinking of. Yeah, before uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. Mm -hmm. The one where the heroes all had their power switch, uh, where Barry and Oliver had their uh, power switched. Yes. No, Doctor Destiny. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah. similar to that. Similar to that. Or, yeah, Doctor Destiny and Psycho Pirate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. similar to that. So, that's where we basically stand. It's uh, going to be interesting to see. But for me, the next episode, while the episode's already aired on the CW, I get it on Netflix, so I don't get it till tomorrow. Gotcha. Have they done anything with uh, blood work? No, not since... Uh, not since... Mirror Mistress uh, got his blood sample. We haven't seen hide nor hair of him since then. Okay, so that's still an open plot thread. Okay. Yes, that's an open plot thread that may or may not get resolved. Thanks, COVID. Oh, that's interesting. Yep, so that's uh, that's the Flash in a nutshell. For any of you listening who want more details on those episodes, better than I could ever give you, Flash TV Talk, Bo and Bell will fill you in. Cool. Because I'll, I'll be honest, since we stopped doing The Flash as a regular thing, I've stopped paying that much attention to it and just started enjoying the episodes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's fine. And I, I just kind of want some general information. I figured, you know, it, it was nice. To, it would be nice to kind of do like a, just a little catch up uh, since, you know, that was, you know, the, the genesis of our podcasting. Oh, yes everything but everybody we're gonna actually call it now because we as Greg said before we were doing some technical stuff with mics and computers and uh, we lost some time so we're just gonna call it a quick one because I've got a baby who's teething and not feeling well and a kid that's been up and down all night who is a lot older than her and should not be up and down all night so it you know family it always comes first absolutely and i'm i'm thankful i don't have to uh well my uh i went to bed, the bed last night and uh pretty late uh well actually it was this morning that i went to bed <laughs> yeah, as, yeah uh, me too um and uh milo was making noises on the baby monitor not fully waking up, but, you know, the occasional kind of mutter here and there. And just, uh, I knew that if he woke up, that I'd have to take care of him. And certainly he, uh, got me up earlier than I would have liked today. But, uh, you know, I've certainly existed on four hours of sleep before. It's just not fun. No, my minimum six, and that's what I got today. So I'm all right. But Sounds with good. all that being said, do you want to follow us throughout the week? I'm at Dr. Alien201 on Twitter and 
Dr. Alien 201 Productions on Facebook. You can just find me under my name on Facebook too. Profile pages, not profile pages, like just regular Facebook pages for, you know, online things. My personal one, it doesn't have much. Greg, where can the people find you? You can find me at uh, the underscore Badger Piper on Twitter. Uh, on the very rare occasion I tweet uh, these days. Um, not out of any reason whatsoever, just kind of uh, life uh, right now. Um, on Instagram, you can find me as uh, the Badger Piper, all one word. And uh, yeah, it's uh, kind of everything for right now. Oh yes, Instagram. Um, I'm on there too, Dr. Allen 201 and um, Dr. Alien 201, I think. I'll double check them out. There'll be links. I got a bunch of I, 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 pre, I pre-made a bunch of short links with Bitly. They'll be in the they'll be in the description. Everything is in the description. You just click links and go wherever. You'll you'll be good. You'll find it. Awesome. And also, our email. Somebody email me, please. I'm gonna shut it down soon if you don't, because there's no sense holding. It. Wait, I can't shut it down. Cause, never mind can't shut it down because that's how I access the podcast. <laughs> so no, I'm not shutting that down. Wait, no. <laughs> and uh, what is that email address? Reverse flash time at gmail.com. Our recycled email address from the end of the speed force days. Sounds good. But with that, we wish you good smokes, great entertainment, and we will see you next week. And all you dads out there, happy Father's Day.